Hi there, everyone. Apologies for not making this video sooner, but I think it is important to at least discuss this topic. Because after the market closed on Friday, something pretty crazy happened that could potentially make you a lot of money, depending on how the market sways. The U.S. imposed additional costs on Russia for the poisoning of a Russian dissident. And the primary things to consider is that this is actually a ban on Russian manufactured ammo being imported to the United States. And I'm going to get into why that is such a significant thing very quickly. But the main points are that all Russian manufactured ammunition, which is actually a pretty broad definition, it doesn't just cover things such as completed cartridges, it covers tons and tons of different components. Any of that manufactured in Russia cannot be imported to the United States. And they say that this will take place for a minimum of 12 months, and that they only will be lifted after a 12-month period if the executive branch determines certain classifications, that they met all these things that they agreed to. I'm not going to go through with them because, in all likelihood, they're not going to lift this restriction. For anyone who has been in the shooting space in the past or just up-to-date on imports, stuff like that, you know, investors that deal a lot with commodity markets, the reality is that there have been tons and tons of sanctions and restrictions on firearm and ammo imports that have happened decades ago. One of the most notable is against the Chinese, especially because Canadians can import tons and tons of crazy, ridiculous Chinese guns that are basically non-existent in the U.S., it's a similar thing for Russian-made firearms, and the reality is this doesn't take any act of the legislative branch. It can just be pushed through through the executive branch, which is why it's so common, even though actual gun control in the United States is very difficult because you have to have a lot of political capital to implement a new law. But importations are really easy to control. They're not an act of legislative power. And there is a lot of criticism that this is more for gun control than anything else. I don't want to get too political. I'm just trying to present the facts for anyone investing in this space. I'm going to get to the stocks that are significant. But I think it's important to point out that the horrific attack against this individual, that happened over a year ago. And there was no pushback against that huge Russian pipeline, which was way more significant and way more important. So to toss out this sort of sanction and say it's because of this individual, it leads a lot of doubt. It kind of seems more like they couldn't push any gun control or restrictions through the legislative branch. So they wanted to see what they could do to uh, potentially impact gun owners. Now, again, I don't have any exact evidence of that, but the way things line up, it kind of appears like that. And again, I'm not saying this to get political or get emotional. I don't want to start a political argument. I bring that up because this 12-month date is very important. You have to know the history of sanctions when it comes to ammunition or any commodity that you're dealing with that is coping with some sort of restriction or other thing affecting the market. All of these videos are for entertainment purposes, not for investment advice, but I want to point out some significant things that could be important. These are things you have to understand, and that's why this 12-month date isn't magic. You know, It's not like, oh, once the 12 months are over, they're totally going to close this out, uh, Russia is totally going to comply with all of this, and even if they do comply, they'll close this out. Sanctions really have not been lifted in the past whenever it comes to firearms and ammunition. Now, why is this so significant? Is Russian ammo really that big in the U.S. market? Well, it's difficult to get exact numbers, but I'll bring up a certain article. Guns and Ammo has a interesting article talking with a lot of the biggest importers of Russian ammunition to the U.S., one of the largest importers of ammo, Charles Brown, according to him, roughly 40% of all the ammunition sold in the United States originates from Russian sources. And I know that figure might seem insane, but you have to realize that Russia used to be the USSR, and they had entire cities dedicated the, to the production of different commodities. You know, what's actually very fascinating, you know, all of these giant multi billion dollar factories made by the USSR were huge and those weren't just tossed away after the USSR collapsed. Those are part of the Russian Federation now. And Tula Ammo is a huge producer that produces tons and tons of incredibly cheap and affordable ammunition and they import it all over the world. The US market was huge since obviously civilian gun ownership is massive in the United States and specifically most of the Russian brands they typically make steel cased ammo. And this is what steel-cased ammo looks like. Uh, generally, they also skimp on the jacket material. So instead of using actual copper, 
They use bimetallic solutions. Sometimes it's a full copper jacket. Sometimes it's zinc jackets. Really, the main point is that these are dramatically cheaper than brass-cased cartridge ammunition. So you have to think the most amount of sales are going to be occurring on the low end, on the affordable end, and they were way cheaper than anything else simply because of the material supply as well as cheaper labor costs in Russia. So you have multiple giant cities dedicated to ammunition production that are capable of producing ammunition that is far cheaper than any of their competitors, and they were importing to the U.S. without much issue. And Tula is only one example of this. Really, there's nothing commercial that's even comparable to what the Soviets built. They really did some crazy stuff because, well, they weren't beholden to a market. Again, not trying to get into politics, but these facilities exist and they've been used for decades and decades, and they're giant. I'd like to say that I deeply appreciate your viewership, and if you like the sort of content I produce, I would highly appreciate it if you like the video and subscribe to the channel. If you want constant notifications whenever I make an upload, just click that little bell icon that shows up after you click subscribe. Also, if you want to get two free stocks and a fantastic way to start trading in the market, use my referral link in the description of this video to Webull. Webull is an online brokerage that I use all the time, and they'll give you two free stocks when you sign up with my referral link. It doesn't cost you anything, and it's a great way to get started. I'll have a little more about them at the end of this video. Again, thank you for your viewership. Now, that's just one input. I will say that one thing to keep in mind is that there are some other sources sort of pushing back against that 40% number. That's one we see thrown around. But we also see from this article from CNN Business about ammunition imports and how huge they are. This was actually in 2016. But one thing they talk about is that Fiocchi, um, a huge Italian company, is actually the top exporter of ammunition. And that the second biggest exporter to the U.S. was a Peruvian ammunition company. And the third, a Serbian one. This seems to be in direct contradiction to what we saw earlier. It is possible that in those few years, things shifted around that dramatically. I'll say that personally, I've seen tons and tons of huge boxes of Russian ammunition sell out very quickly. It seems to be incredibly popular, especially with the huge uh, crisis that we're going through with all of the virus issues and uh, civil unrest complications like that. In fact, if we get to the number of background checks performed by the National Instant Criminal Background Check System, which the FBI uses to perform a background check when you go to purchase a firearm. Now, this isn't perfect for predicting the amount of firearms being purchased and in circulation, because obviously you can build your own and you can get multiple firearms on one of these background checks, assuming they're occurring on the same exact time that you're taking ownership of the other ones. But it does give us a rough estimate to the amount of firearms being purchased in the U.S., and we can see that there's been a pretty consistent, steady growth, but things have really gotten crazier and crazier and crazier. Obviously, the virus and civil unrest is a huge thing. People feel uncomfortable. You know, they want to defend themselves, and things have changed dramatically just in the entire psyche of the U.S. And I'll say I know anecdotally tons and tons of friends that I went to college with who were very anti-gun who are now posting pictures on their social media of what they just bought. So it seems like there's been a pretty dramatic shift in how the general population views firearm ownership. It's become incredibly common among tons and tons of communities, and these numbers just keep going up in 2021. We're already on track to beat all of these records. So there's tons and tons of firearms being purchased, more so than forever. You know, prices are already ridiculous for firearms and ammunition, and with potentially 40% of the market being pulled out from under our feet, it could become even higher. And this is why I say it could be a good opportunity to make a lot of money. Because there are major ammo manufacturers in the U.S. who are very likely going to have much larger margins. Again, if we go back to that 12-month mark, if we're being realistic, it's almost certainly not going to be over after a year or even a couple years more than likely it's going to be like the other sanctions where they just stay in place forever. Because regardless of which president was in power, regardless of their party, they've never lifted these ammo and firearm sanctions. But that 12-month mark does make it difficult for companies to really ramp up. Because it takes years to make a huge state-of-the-art ammo factory. You know, again, when we talk about the giant Russian facilities, those are huge 
bankrupting acts of a entire empire. The commercial market is, it's difficult to compete with that. While it's likely not going to be 12 months, there's always that little risk in the back of your head whenever you're proposing something new, you know, and ammunition can be a difficult market. So I'm not sure if we're going to see a lot of other manufacturers step up to the plate because it's difficult to do this. And even if they do, it's not going to happen for years. It's going to take a lot of time to completely change how everything is ramping up and ammunition prices are already at an all time high. So let's get to three stocks that I've seen mentioned a lot. The first one is Vista Outdoors. Now Vista Outdoors owns a lot of different outdoor brands, but they own tons and tons of firearm related brands such as CCI, Federal, Remington now. They own tons of these. And Federal Ammunition is obviously one of the biggest ammo companies in the U.S. Same with Remington and CCI. And these are all under the purview of Vista Outdoors. If we take a look at them, their market cap is currently $2.327 billion, and they do have a pretty solid earnings per share. Their P.E. ratio is actually quite reasonable, especially when you compare it to other stocks in the S&P 500. And we can take a look at their long-term chart. Now, obviously, there's been a lot going on in the past two years to dramatically change how firearms and ammunition companies are valued, but we can see they've had pretty consistent, steady growth. It's been pretty staggering how much they've gone up. And this was closing on Friday. It is quite possible that they end up soaring in the next year or so simply because of how much money they're making. They're a huge company with a lot of brands and Quite honestly, they seem very well managed. Now, there's been some pretty significant hiccups, especially when it comes to earnings per share, but they finally reached their profit threshold, and they've been doing quite well in that regard. Ammo is a pretty rough business, so it is difficult to judge over the long, long term. But again, we're talking about a minimum of a year with a huge cutoff of supply, and potentially even more. But they've pretty consistently been beating the consensus earnings by significant amounts. The next company I wanted to talk about was Olin, which is a huge chemical manufacturer, which also produces tons and tons of ammunition. They actually own the Winchester brand. They actually trade under this ticker, and they are a far bigger company at $7.155 billion, although you can see some concern about their earnings per share. In the past two years, they've really flown up as ammunition prices have flown up. They can make a lot of profit off things like this. However, they were losing money until just recently. Ammo is a very rough game, but in these past few years with these huge demands and other factors in the market, they've been making a lot of money and might be poised for a breakout. And another big one is Ammo Incorporated. This is an interesting name. They own a couple different brands, but they are relatively small. If we take a look at their market cap, we see they're the only company here that's under the $1 billion mark. So they're far smaller, so they could potentially go up way more because, again, when you have a high market cap stock, there are a lot of shares out there. You need a lot of money to push it up, let's say, 30%. But 30% on a smaller market cap is a lot easier, assuming everyone else feels the same. Now, if we look at their chart, we see their price is really soaring up. Actually, before, they were incredibly small when it came to the price on their stock. They were penny stock tier. But obviously, they've been making a lot of money, been gaining a lot of trading volume, and still probably in that penny stock realm. But they've been pushing up pretty strongly. And it seems to be a similar story, where they were actually losing money before, and now it seems they met just barely losing money. And now there's an estimate that they will make money, but it's yet to be seen that they are making money. You can see all their earnings per shares are negative, and they've been hacking it out for a while. But we do see the negative earnings per share is going down. And with this new constriction, it's going to be interesting to see how all this plays out. I will say there is a concern with smaller companies because it's difficult to just get the raw materials in order to make ammunition if you're a smaller company. These bigger ones are going to have more negotiating power. And it's going to depend how each of these companies have dealt with the pandemic, how they're able to secure supplies during supply chain shortages. But they are a smaller option. And if you really want to get into the ammo game, all three of these stocks might be viable for you. Every single one is at a different market cap stage. One is 7 bill, another one is 2, and this one is under a billion. They all serve different sort of parts of the ammo market. And they're all in a pretty good position when the cheapest, most affordable, incredibly popular ammo on the market just evaporates overnight. 
prices have already doubled on a lot of the traditional Soviet calibers. The question is production, tooling, and whether or not they can secure the raw materials. Obviously, raw materials are very important, and those might also be another great play if you're trying to get into that. Brass, smokeless powder, and lead are pretty significant when it comes to ammo manufacturing, as well as copper, and primer material. That is one point where Olin really shines because they do a lot of chemical production. Now, that's not to say the other companies don't do any as well. Federal obviously deals a lot with powders, things like that. But Oland has a pretty significant focus on it. Really, I think Vista Outdoors is a pretty sweet spot because their P.E. ratio is extremely reasonable. They are a highly profitable company right now. They have a lot of solid brands. One, outdoor activities are getting way more popular. Ammo is getting huge, and they own one of the biggest ammo manufacturers in the United States and they have a pretty reasonable market cap. Honestly, I think this would be a fairly solid buy. But again, this is just for entertainment purposes, not investment advice. Olin is also doing a lot of good. They are selling tons and tons of different resources. Again, they are generally not profitable. It's just fairly recently that they've started to turn around that trend, and it does look like they're going to keep that up. But they are a big company, and they do a lot in the chemical space as well. And Ammo Inc. is interesting. This is a very small company, relatively speaking, when it comes to market cap. Uh, seems like they were floundering for a little while, but all these huge surges in demand have really helped them. They started to make more and more money. But this is obviously going to be a lot riskier than those other big established companies. And as I mentioned before, ammo prices are pretty cyclical. While this is definitely going to last for over a year, and the continued lockdowns, other stuff like that, are most likely going to continue spiking ammo prices as well as all the new gun buyers. You do have to be careful about longer term plays, like in three, four, or five years. While this sanction will likely still be in effect in those few years, you have to understand that ammo is a very low margin, difficult market. And you also have to make sure that you're investing in quality companies. You know, let's say there's a huge demand for cars, but a company is putting out bad, crappy cars. Well, they probably won't fare too well over the long term. Really, if each of these companies strike your fancy, I highly recommend you go through all of their investor fact sheets and try to make a decision on your own. These could be fantastic companies to get into when the trading week starts because, hey, ammo is going to be in a hot supply. They're likely going to hammer away at their earnings because they're going to have much higher margins. There's a lot that this actually caused. And if you're on top of it, you could make a pretty profit. Good luck in the stock market. I wish you all the best. If you're interested in investing in the market with self-directed trading, a fantastic way to start is with Webull. If you sign up now using my referral link in the description of this video, you'll get two free stocks valued up to $2,300, which includes companies like Google, Facebook, and Starbucks, as well as many others. All the money in your account is yours to invest, trade, or withdraw as you please. It's your money. There's zero fees associated with depositing money. You just get your stocks and you'll get your buying power immediately. So if you want a fantastic mobile, desktop, and web trading brokerage, just use the link in the description of this video. Thanks and happy trading.